How's Manny the Body Shop Girl doing today? Good. So you're in a good mood now? I'm in an okay mood. to you. Do what? It's all up Okay, first to of you. all, I'm the only one that talks with my hand. What does that mean? What's flipped that? Your nose. I flipped your nose right on the nose. Have you ever had anybody flip, flip you on the nose like that? Only when I was a little kid and got in trouble by teachers or nuns or moms. There you go. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to learn a new lesson in restoration, and the lesson that we're going to learn is a product called Brushable Seam Sealer. Do you see that? Mm. Can you read that right there? Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. People don't know what this is for. When you hear the word seam sealer, you're thinking of drip rails, you know, seams where you might have welded your floor in, stuff like that. Yeah. But this plays a big part in car restoration, and it's called brushable seam seal, and it comes in a quart can. Several companies make this stuff. This just happens to be one of them. Um, and uh, 3M is probably the biggest player in this situation. When I say biggest player, we're talking money. So before we go use this product, let's go ahead and take a look at it. And what we got here is basically it's the same exact thing that you would find in the tube of caulking, a caulking tube, except it's actually in a brushable slash paint, uh, paint stick style substance. Do you see what I'm saying? So you can cover very large areas with it, and you can go back to your factory original style uh, seam sealing that was applied at the factory because this is how they actually applied it at the factory. Okay, they had automatic uh, pneumatic guns that would squirt it out in the grooves and then another guy would come by and he'd have this big giant brush and you know a five gallon jug and he'd slop it on there. You see what I'm saying? Many? Yeah. Alright so this is basically seam sealer. It's a product that has to, must be used if you do what we did to the car that we're going to go look at and if you don't use this and don't do it properly, what's going to happen to you is it's going to rot and rust, get moisture in all the cracks and the seams and everything else, and then later down the line you're going to have a lot of problem issues. Um, now, uh, where we're using this, the reason that we're using this is we have the bottom of the car completely sandblasted. And I specifically told them that I want all the seam sealer removed, I want all the fender wells completely clean, so we have to go back and apply this to the car to get it back to the condition of actually restoring the car properly. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Well, it just seems like to me it would be a whole lot easier. Okay, right here, see? This is what we're talking about? Yeah, I can okay. see it. Yeah. Are you talking about this? Yeah. Okay, what well, would be of easier? I'm talking about Go ahead. That. That's what, what we're talking would be about here today. What do you think I'm going to talk about the birds and the bees? Well, go ahead. Yeah, that stuff just seems to me it'd be a whole lot easier to apply in the tube like a caulking gum than... And you know what? For the system that, I mean, for the sections that we are going to put it on, it would take you 20 tubes oh. of seam sealer. Okay? 
Okay, well, and we're we also go. going back for the factory original look. Because I know a lot of people out there are thinking the same thing. Why is well, he going to use that when a tube is so much easier? Because this, you can apply in big, giant amounts, all right, instead of one little squirt at a time. Oh, I guess you're fixing to show us why that's going to be better. Than yeah, the that's right. Blood. So what you're going to need is a pair of gloves, of course. And this glove is really small. What the hell? <laughs> Okay, that one's smaller than this one. We're going to need a cork can of seam sealer. And um, we have to do some extra seam sealing, and I'm going to show you that when we get up under there. Because uh, the car that we're working on, which is this car right here, is a 1968 Mustang convertible. And if Minnie comes over here, she can see somebody replaced partial floors in the car. See where they welded this right here? Okay, so that's a partial section that they replaced on each side, and I believe that's all they replaced. Well, they replaced it up here, too, and you can kind of basically see what's going on. Yeah. All right, you can see it way up here. Kind of did a tacky job doing it, and the way that they did that is they cut a hole out, they stuck the floor in there, and this is the most common way that most people do it. They want to save money. They don't want it butt welded, and what they do is they set it in there, and then they cut the floor approximately a, a half an inch bigger all the way around. They set the floor in there, and then they only weld the top only. And then on the bottom, what they'll do is they'll take their hammer and pound it all the way around, and then they'll seam seal the bottom. And pretend like it's sealed up? Well, it does seal it, but if you want to know the right way to do that, here's the right way. The proper way to do it, which is, you know, not everybody's got a machine like this or space to use, but the proper way to really replace the floor panel is to put it on a rotisserie, and if Minnie comes in here, she can see where I put the floors in, full floor pans, and I welded all the way around that floor. And then if we look at the bottom side of it, you can see where I welded all the way around, and you can see right here where I started this one, and I haven't ground it down yet. But I welded all the way around, so it's welded inside and outside. Now, another way you can do it, and here's a good example. If you look right here, you can see where it's approximately an inch, the, the replacement floor is approximately an inch bigger. But you can see my weld from the inside, and then what I'm going to do is I'll weld it all the way around on the outside, and then that will seal the floor airtight so you don't have any problems at all. And then you don't have to buy uh, quarts or gallons of seam sealer and hope it doesn't fall out if you don't know how to apply it properly. And that's what my friend Pete's here for, is to show you how to apply brushable seam sealer the proper way. We got Mr. Majestic here on Mr. Mercedes guy. How's your car looking here, guy? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. I don't know. I have no idea. That's, what do I have you Mr. for? Mr. Majestic's here with us. Uh, what do I have you for? We're telling everybody about I your floors. Know, if you tell okay. me, I mean... We're telling everybody about the, the floor. Never trust somebody. Okay, I mean. now, this is the proper way to do it, where you weld it up inside and out, versus the way they did it, where you just weld the top and then seam seal it. Okay, that was great. Okay? great. Is there something wrong with that, Mr. Majestic? Well, I don't know. It's yeah. looking good. Okay. Looking good, bud. This is yeah. your muffler hanger. See, this is where the muffler uh, hanger. Yeah, yeah. But you had rotten rust behind this, and I had to take that off. Okay. You know, it's not my problem that you want to restore a 1976 Mercedes. <laughs> Ooh, that might have been What was hard. that? Let me see that. <laughs> okay, there you go. Is that part of your... That's actually seam sealer. There you that's go. What we're that's see, what this we're is, talking about right now. That's what we're talking about right there, see? Okay. Seam sealer. Oh, okay. But, okay. Take that. Well, we're glad that uh, Mr. Majestic came by. This is a very, very big project we're doing over here. It's going to take a lot of seam sealer to get that thing done. But what we're working on today is our Mustang. Now, I've already epoxy primed this. We had it sandblasted. Um, if Minnie can bring the camera under here, we're going to see. This is the fender well that we're going to go ahead and use our seam sealer on right here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And if you look real close, you can see where the two fender wells were put together. Where is it at? Here it is right here. Mm -hmm. All right. So this was spot welded together. Now, from the factory, what they did is they seam sealed that up using the brushable seam sealer. And this is where brushable seam sealer comes in handy. 
So what I got here is I got three various sizes of throwaway brushes. And we don't want to use the foam brushes. You always want to use the ones that's got the bristles. All right, just like that. We're going to go over there. We're going to seam seal one of the fender wells. I'm going to show you how this stuff works and what it's used for. All right, so I got my seam sealer. I got my paint stick. I got my rubber gloves on. Very important to have for this job. I also got my three throwaway brushes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our seam sealer with our stick. Now another item that you can use is if you have a piece of metal, um, take that piece of metal and bend it. So it's got kind of like a curve in it. Do you see what I'm saying, Minnie? Mm -hmm. And then that way you can use it as a spoon. Could you but use like a narrow putty knife and bend it? You can use a putty knife if you want. A flexible putty knife and bend that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply it with our paint stick. And we're going to take our seam sealer just like this. And then look what I'm doing here. You see that? Huh? And I'm filling this gap in. Look how I'm filling that in. And when I say gap, I'm talking about this valley from this side to this side. That's why this is created, so you can fill that in with seam sealer. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to roll it in there. And this is a time-consuming job. And it's a job that takes time. So we're going to fill this in. You can see how I just did that. And I'm going to bring it all the way around here just like the factory would have done. Alright, because this, this is a very important area to protect. This is your inner fender well and it gets a lot of slop and a lot of slush from weather. You know what I'm saying, Minnie? Mm -hmm. Even though the people that are restoring these particular type of cars these days aren't going to drive them in weather, we still want to go back to the factory way that they were built. And then we're going to go right here. And you got to be really easy with this. And if you notice, I'm rolling my stick as I'm applying it. Now, this is a convertible, so where I'm putting the seam sealer right now, um, this section right here wouldn't be flattened out if you had a coupe. It would go all the way around. The reason they do that is so the convertible top will roll down. And the best weather to use this stuff in is between 50 and 70 degrees. And the reason I say that is if it's too hot, it'll fall off. It, it doesn't want to stay. So if you can catch this on a nice cool day, it's a lot easier to use. But you can see how pliable it is and how nice it's going on. Do you see that, many? Yeah, it's actually going on a lot easier than a pictured in my head. And this is, once again, this is a time-consuming job and it takes time to do it. You're not going to do it overnight. Or should I say, I'm sorry, you're not going to do it in a lickety split second. But you just got to have patience. Take your time and hopefully none will fall on the floor when you don't have paper on the floor. The real trick to this is is making sure that it sticks to the body, that you're giving enough equal pressure where it will stick in there, see? Now, the owner had uh, some repairs done to this quarter panel, and if many can look really hard, uh, right here you can see where it was welded together. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take some of that seam sealer, and then we'll also put it across here. Now, this ain't going to stay like this. But we're just applying it right now. Okay. All right, I see a section right here. See how this lip right here is, um, what can we call that, separated? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of this seam sealer, just like this. And we're going to go ahead and fill that in. Just going to force it up in there. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a caulking gun on this section here, but... It's not really mandatory, but we're going to go ahead and force it up in here. And we're not going to do the whole thing because not all of it is separated, but you can see where there was some seam sealer right there. All right, now that we have applied our first coat of seam sealer, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take my brush and then watch what happens here. Do you see that? See how I'm doing that? Okay. And I'm brushing it out and making sure that it seems sealed properly because this is how the factory would have done it um, from the factory. See how nice it gives it that factory look that we want many. Mm -hmm. And anybody that looks inside a fender well of an old Mustang or possibly an old car, this is what they're going to see, see? Alright, then we'll take our stick and we'll get the extra off. And if you're not used to doing this, this can be a mess, so be prepared. And then we'll go ahead and get it right here. And by using the brush, what the brush is doing, it's flowing it out and it's also pushing it in. See? You understand? And this is something that people really pass up and they don't pay attention to on their restoration job. Or even if you were going to replace. Alright, now look what that did there, see? If we look right here. You can see where it's not really, there's like a gap there, see it didn't really flow out. Uh -huh. So what I'll do is I'll come back here. Add a little more. I'm going to add a little bit more because that's like a, that's like a void that we don't want right here in this area. So I'm going to turn my stick as I'm applying. Now about how much working time do you have with this stuff? Uh, well, it actually takes approximately three to four hours for this to dry, so you got a lot of working time. And then we'll take our brush. Now look, see how I float it out. And now see now, it looks factory. All right. Now I'm not saying that you have four hours to mess with this. You probably have about 20 minutes, if that. Um, once it is uh, released to the air, I mean it does start drying. And if you want a nice clean seal it's better to get it done as fast as possible so okay. i wouldn't apply it to all four and then come back and brush it do no one wheel at you a have time. to do one wheel well at a time so what we're going to do now is we're going to get up under the car and i'm going to seam seal the floor where it was welded in so now that we've used this brush pretty much useless it won't do us any good we need to get a clean brush and when you buy your brushes, get several. Don't just get one, because it takes several brushes to do this job. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and take my stick. And once again, you can use putty knives if that's what you want to use. All right. And then I will seam seal this in just like this. And uh, I'll tell you this, it's not the funnest job in the world and this is why when you're doing a job like this it should be done with a rotisserie this upside down job action I mean you know this is it's a messy job and it will frustrate you so don't get frustrated um, I don't believe this is how they applied this it looks like they used their fingers it looks like they used caulking tubes and then fingers to do it but we're trying to get it the proper way here where it'll be seam sealed up and since we're going to be using a brush on this you don't have to be real what can I say uh, you don't have to be neat with it as long as you don't get it to where it's falling on the floor you know what I'm saying Okay, now that we have all of our seam seal applied to the floor, what we'll do is we'll take our brush, and I'm going to use a smaller brush, and then we're going to brush it into, you see what I'm doing? See there? And this is what you do when you weld your floors in. This is how you would do it right here. And kind of get it to where it's level. But you see, you really don't, you know, Minnie was asking how much time 
it does take two to three hours for this to dry but you got approximately 10 minutes to have it flow out for you so before it starts getting, before it too, starts tacky getting too tacky and to smooth out smooth out right and this is not self-leveling stuff no this is not self-leveling this is just your average seam sealer that would be used for basically what we're doing here main thing that you got to do when you do this the main thing use ample pressure to push it when you're pulling it you want to push it in to make it Go adhese to well you want to make it adhese to the metal where it's not going to fall off that's your main objective All right. And then when you're all done painting and everything's done, you can see it's got that factory look right back and looks awesome. We went ahead and painted the underneath of the car. Let's get a little gander what that looks like so I can show you. And you can see right there, there's the seam sealer on the floor, just like it should be. So everything is sealed up, everything's painted. And if you do it right, then that's what it looks like. And that's what you call brush-on seam sealer. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at the front end itself. We went ahead and painted all that too. So we got all the front end painted, got the bottom painted, and we did all our seam sealing with our brush, our brushable seam sealer, and it's a done deal. So that's what it's used for that's what it is and it's a necessity if you're restoring your car and want to do it the right way because over here at diy auto school we either do it right do it right do it right because if we're not doing it right we definitely ain't doing it at all thanks for watching diy automotive school Classes don't stop till you know everything.